evening, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. I know it's a little um, misty outside, at least it was when I came in. I'm Chantal Shorter, the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction in the district. So again, thank you for coming. I have no idea what my hair looks like. So if you're all looking at me like, oh, it's nice to meet you, or it could be out to here at this point, I don't know. But I was lugging stuff in in the mist, and I haven't had a chance to. Okay. <laughs> if it's not, just you know, like, feel free to like, you know, kind of out a little bit. Um, so thank you so much for coming. I want to introduce everyone and then get us started. This is our transition to kindergarten night or our kindergarten information night. So I want to start off with our I want to come up with a nickname, but I'm trying to pull myself back here. Our floral crew over here. I can't it. Um, we did. We have Mrs. Royster, kindergarten teacher, and we have Mrs. Butler, who is also a kindergarten teacher. They will be presenting to you tonight. And then um, we also have Miss Gray, who is our registrar in the district. Um, some of you, probably most of you, have spoken to her at some point along this journey. And then over here to my left, we have. Dr. Pilato at Van Skyver. We have Mrs. Massey at Stoy and Jennings. And then we have Ms. Lunsford at Strawbridge and Edison. And then over to my right, we have Dr. Pizzicaro, our superintendent in the district. So really quickly before we start, just by a show of hands, how many of you already have a child in the district? Okay, great. So, can you raise them really, really high for me? And then everybody look around. So we are going to try to answer as many questions. You guys can come in and grab a snack, find a seat. Feel free to sit wherever you like. Um, we will answer as many questions for you as we can and give you any information along the way. But our community and our support group are all around you. So it's really, um, we like to look at it as a village and get you know our support from within and also from you know the formal communication channels. So without further ado, I'm going to let Dr. Carroll speak for a few minutes, and then we will start with our first Welcome, everyone. Uh, it's nice to see uh, some of your faces. Thank you for that last year. Some of us are going to appreciate it. Let me ask the question the other way. How many do not have children in the district right now? Okay, so we have a half. Great. Well, welcome to Head Township. Uh, my name is Bob Pisacero. This is my fourth year here as superintendent. Uh, we take a lot of pride in our school district. We have uh, all the adults that work in here with our kids are extremely motivated, um, very skilled. We could not ask for a better staff. Uh, we are in the process of upgrading most of our facilities. Uh, you may have heard uh, some information about a $30 million bond referendum that recently passed. So we're very excited to upgrade our infrastructure. I think when you have a uh, really good workforce, dedicated teachers, skilled administrators, experienced folks that really care, that love the kids, um, that show up to work as much as they can, um, the last thing that we can do, the most responsible thing that we can do is upgrade uh, the environment in which students learn. So that's so, something that we're certainly committed uh, to doing. We are currently in a, a bit of a difficult spot financially. Many of you may be aware um, that we're due to lose a significant amount of state funding um, from Trenton. You know, public school budgets are made up of a combination of taxes raised to the local tax levy and state aid that is provided from Trenton. Unfortunately, this year we are taking a step backwards in the amount of state aid. We were originally slated to lose about $800,000 of state aid. That number is going to fall a little bit north of about $438,000. So uh, the good news is that we have, we're managing to keep our commitment to a full day instructional kindergarten program. Uh, when, we were, when, we were, when we originally received that news, we were a little bit nervous of whether we were going to be able to continue with a full day instructional program. Um, but we are fully committed to build on the foundation of what we created this year, and um, we are excited to do that. There is no bad question tonight, um, so whatever questions that you have, I would make this as interactive as, as you can. Um, we're going to have two great teachers in a short time, um, but feel free to ask any questions that you may have. The most common question is where will my child go to school? If you're not already familiar with our dotted line, solid line, school assignment map, 
um, please contact Ms. Gray. She'll send it to you. Is it on our website? Yeah. It's on our website. You can put in your address, and you can see, based on where the pin drops, which school you will definitely, your child will definitely go to, or if you're in an area where there could be a choice between two schools, I think there's one section, there's one development, where I think there's a choice of three schools. The reason we do that is because we're committed to balancing class sizes. We don't want to get in a situation like we were in a few years ago where one class had 11 kids in it and another class had 28. Right? It's just not fair. We want to provide equitable services and equity starts with trying to manage class size in a similar fashion across the country. So, um, there's no more important thing than early childhood education. It was a district goal this year. It was a district goal the year before. We expanded our pre-K program, which was the benefit from the benefit the children who benefit from our ex uh, expanded for a structural program uh, next year. So welcome to Hatton Township. If you have any questions, I'll be here for the duration of the night. But feel free to ask anyone. I'll turn it over to Lisa Baby. Thank you. Good evening. Hi, welcome to Haddon Township Kindergarten. My name is Sinead Royster. I've been lucky enough to work in early childhood education for the past 22 years, uh, and 18 of those years have been here in Haddon Township. Uh, the last two years, <laughs> Amy and I have been working together and uh, teaching inclusion. Uh, I'm Amy Bowen. I actually live in town. We moved here so I could send my kids here because I love the district so much. I taught, this is my 14th year teaching, 10th year in district. I taught preschool when we were half day, half day. I taught half day kindergarten, half day preschool. So I know where your kids are coming from and I'm excited to have them now in kindergarten. Uh, Sinead said we teach inclusion. That means it's a classroom that has students with IEPs or uh, special education and we're lucky enough to co-teach. Um, welcome to kindergarten. We thought this picture was so cute because we show such a happy face. Uh, we're going to give you a sneak peek into a day of kindergarten. We're going to hope these videos work. We thought no better way to tell you guys what kindergarten is without our skirts. Here it is from us. It's a piece where we use it. It's that. Kindergarten is cool. It's a place to play. Hey! They grow socially, they grow emotionally. We do a lot of turn taking, we do developmental play where we actually get to help facilitate their play. Uh, similar to what you would think in a preschool classroom, but we continue to do it because we have the full day program, we're able to also do that in kindergarten. Um, a lot of expressing our feelings. The school counselors come in, they help us out. We do a lot of following directions. By the end of the year, multi-step directions. Um, how to be a good friend, uh, citizens. Uh, we find it important that they feel like they're part of our community, part of our family. Um, most important to us is that they leave kindergarten seeing themselves as a learner. They're excited about school, they love school, they can't wait to go back the next day, and I feel like we don't need them. So let's talk about our day. When we start our day, they come in, we call it arrival activities. Each classroom will call it something different. We start our day with a soft opening, we call it. It's kind of like a no pressure time. They get to come in, they get to greet their friends, greet their teachers, 
they unpack their backpack, they have responsibilities, they put their folder away, they put their lunchbox away, they have to check in on their lunch count because they get to buy lunch at the lunchroom if they want to. Um, we don't teach that all in the first year. <laughs> They'll learn how to do it. They, it's very student driven at this point, they feel like they're in control in a lot of it. And so we kind of find that's an easy way to start a no pressure day. Uh, it's also an opportunity to socialize with our peers. We can't expect them to come in and sit down and get to work. Um, our morning meeting. This is where I always last. This is my baby. But I feel like this is our time that we really get to feel like a family and get to talk. The kids get to show off what they know. Um, in the pictures, you can kind of see we're doing calendar. That's a place for us to talk about math skills that aren't necessarily taught in our curriculum, but things that we need to know. We do days of the week, we do months of the year, we count or we do patterns. Um, marking we special weather, we stop, yeah. marking special events, how many days till the next thing. Um, the kids, we have our kids, we do a busy bee, and they're in charge of doing the calendar, so they actually get to put in the days of the week, they get to put in the numbers. We also have a visual schedule each day, so the kids know what to expect. We do a morning schedule and an afternoon schedule. You can see that on the bottom right. Um, and at the top, this is something that has evolved this year. Every morning from September till, I don't know, January, February, mm -hmm. uh, Sinead and I both wrote a morning message. We would take turns, the kids would come up, they would mark what they know. Day one, they're marking letters they know. By October, they're marking full words they know. By, by I'll say January, they're marking sentences that they know. They're identifying punctuation. Right now, we're marking diagraphs. We're marking short vowel sounds with a breve. As you can see, Dash and Harper wrote their very own morning message now, and the kids are now editing their friend's work. It's just amazing how much this has cost, and this is something that we're noticing more and more with the full day kindergarten. This is not something we had time to do before. So we're really proud of this this year. Literacy. <laughs> Literacy is my baby. <laughs> so read alouds, guided reading, independent reading, uh, us modeling reading, reading with students, and then that independent reading, students reading on their own. Um, you can just see from the pictures the joy that it really is a community building experience. Um, we're learning through Foundations is our phonics program. It's explicit, it's direct. Um, and that's something that we adopted in the district this year. We have seen a huge boom from, from the children with that. Uh, we also incorporate Fontes and Pinnell, which is a multi-literature approach, and that lends itself to the model of having a whole group lesson, breaking up into small groups, and independent learning. Uh, but it is one of probably my favorite things to teach. Writing, so having children realize that they can carry meaning in their words. Seeing themselves as a writer is really important. So it starts really small, like you'll see the little girl rolling out her name, um, but that's getting those fine motor muscles going, getting ready for writing. So expressing ourselves, using different muscle modalities, shaving cream, all of the things that we can do just to prepare them to create letters and make letters, uh, and then down to the nitty gritty of concepts of print, where you start on the page, where are you going left to right and top to bottom, all of those things that you have to know in order to be a writer. Um, Amy asked the kids in the bottom video, she'll press in a minute, um, we asked them, what do you like about kindergarten? And they take ownership in their words, they know they can reread their words and that they carry meaning. Uh, you'll notice that they talk about Kinder Buds, just so you know, Kinder Buds, um, is our collaboration with our third grade advanced guidebook. So we see that once a week, so it's a pure collaboration. Uh, the other thing you'll notice is they all like stuff. Yes. <laughs> Before I play the video, I did want to comment on the little boy at the top right there. You can't tell what he wrote in that picture, but he actually took the time to take each one of our schedule cards and he wrote exactly what is on the schedule and he wrote the actual words. But I want to note that this was during his playtime. He chose, this is what he chose to do. And if you knew this boy, it would blow your mind. And we were so proud of him. It was just a really cool moment. All right, now I'll show you this one. I like what? Like. I like snack time. I like snack time. <laughs> Because I love to be punctual. 
Um, snack helps with a lot of our self-help skills. They need to open up the bag, they need to close the bag, they need to wash their hands, they need to clean up their snack. Um, they get a quick, probably about what, 10 minutes, seven minutes really to eat. Um, but it's still a time for them to socialize. We have it as a no pressure thing. They get to sit, they get to talk. When they're done, they can go read a book with a friend. Um, we do get outside as much as we can, as much as long as the weather permits. Um, even with a little drizzle some days because it's so necessary with a long day. Uh, we will take walks outside, we'll go on the laptop, we can chalk outside. There's a lot of different options for us. Um, play centers is what I was talking about earlier, the developmental playtime. We, in our classroom at least, we like to do um, themes in our development in our dramatic play area. So we start the year with the kitchen, which I know most of the kindergarten classrooms have. Um, we turn ours into a diner, we've turned it into a flower shop. Doctor's turned office. into a doctor's <laughs> office, a vet's office, store, uh, a school this year, which was a new one for mm -hmm. us. They really wanted to play school, so they set it up like a school. Um, but we let them kind of take the lead. They tell us what we need in it. They help us make labels for it, and it's just a really fun time. They Sometimes they even get to vote what they would like it to be next, so it gives them the ownership. We were lucky enough to get a lot of materials this year. We have a lot of building blocks. We have a, little, a lot of games they can play, puzzles to do. We kind of swap out and let them pick what they want. There's really a, it's really a choice time to, to have control of it. Um, Simon. <laughs> yeah. uh, so exploring the world as a scientist, um, observing, questioning, and exploring, the great part for us is that five and six year olds love science. Uh, they are curious, they want to be out in the world, and they, they really want to be a part with hands, you know, hands on things. So um, our standards in New Jersey cover life, physical, and earth sciences. Our school is lucky enough to have people come into the school sometimes to do um, uh, an assembly. So that's a mad scientist that came in. We had one this year that did it also. Um, a lot of the schools do that one. Uh, we did some planting this year. We had a, they can see the soil bins. They got to plant their own seeds. We had a pumpkin come in. We carved it open, pulled the seeds out. It's a lot of fun. So we try to be as hands-on as possible with it. Social studies. So as far as our curriculum goes, cultures and perspective, it sounds Sounds Fancy. very big, but I'll give you the breakdown. So learning about themselves, um, one thing we do is star of the week. So we find out each child and adult in the classroom gets to be the star of the week. And really what they find out is similarities, differences, and, and accepting those. So it really is a great thing. And we write stories for every star. It's, it's a really exciting thing for them. Uh, obviously, government rules, learning about why they're important in our society and in our school are very important. Uh, learning about where we live. Um, Patton Township is one of our favorite places to explore, and we'll show you some more about that. Um, civics, learning about community helpers, and you can see the Patton Township Fire Department. They always come to visit, and they teach our, all the students in the district about uh, fire safety. So, and also, the dentist. yep, the dentist came as well from Dr. Amy James's office um, and teaching them about dental health during February. So just keeping all of those things. Um, we always say we are proud Americans. We say our pledge as a school every morning and we sing patriotic songs um, and knowing our national sim symbols. Ms. Um, Royster, can I interrupt for one second? Ms. Mrs. Massey, can you just share your dental story? really fast where the, the students were using you as the patient oh in my preschool class? yes just to like give yes. a little perspective about you know like the so. preschoolers going into kindergarten but they will use anyone <laughs> and miss so miss massey was yes brand I, I, new i go to preschool um every day that is my my play time to to you know play in the sand i do blocks i do my little pony and i was instructed to sit down because i was going to the dentist so I said, oh, so I'm on the little chair, and they're in this, open up, no, no, wider, and they're this close to my face, looking in, they're like, oh, all right, so do you have some cavities in here? I'm like, oh, I don't get too wide. <laughs> so then, the next, so another friend was like, oh, I would like to see inside there, so then there was a line of preschoolers that just wanted to say in my mouth and tell me that um, I needed some work done. <laughs> so they're not just, not afraid to let you know what's really going so, on. That's all in kindergarten. We're going after the store buying one of those Play-Doh heads that open yes. up. That would be great. great. That's the thing. That would be great. That's what we got. No one would Add that to next year's. <laughs> 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 I did it in Gloss 
for you. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was very fitting. I'm like, preschool or kindergarten, they will um, yes. will make everyone feel yes. right at home because, like I said, Mrs. Massey was um, a new principal in our district in January, and they made her feel right at home. <laughs> um, so it's very, very much hands-on. Just before we keep going, does anyone have any questions at this point? up to this point of anything that you've heard or something that's popped into your mind and you want to ask it while it's at the front of mind. We're also almost done. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to check and make sure. And if you want to get up and get a cookie or a water, <laughs> feel free. Yeah. Make sure everyone's signed in. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Uh, so field trips, I will say one of the nicest parts about Haddon Township is that we have a lot of control in the field trips that we take. So from year to year, it varies depending on the interests of our students. So that part is really nice for us as the educator. So this year, um, shout out to Bruno. <laughs> Mr. Bruno let us uh, learn how to make pizza with him. We walked from Van Skyver. Uh, we made a how to make pizza book and then we went back to the classroom and the kids made their own how to books, how to tie your shoes how to swim, how to do a back bend. <laughs> so um, all of our trips are interwoven into our curriculum. Uh, that beautiful picture at the top was our science trip. We went to Camp Creek Run where they got to uh, learn in different areas, farm and woods, and just learning how to be a scientist and exploring. Uh, and most recently, we went to Storybook Land. Uh, we did a unit on fairy tales, fractured fairy tales, and we'll be concluding that unit going to the library in another week or two with our kinder buds, so everyone has a library card for summer. So we utilize what we have in the community as well as outside of the community, but all experiences that really help children grow on a whole. And it's fun to be back at field trips because there was a lot of years we did. <laughs> yeah, so we're excited. This year was a full force field trip. Um, the kids in kindergarten do get to have specials, which is nice. So they get to go to um, Phys Ed or Gym, as you heard in our video. Uh, they have health also. They get to go to Learn Spanish. They have an art class and they have music class. Uh, each school does have a library, um, usually run by the PTI, and it's usually well done. Uh, so they get a chance to get out of the chapter and be with a different teacher and explore the different things in the class, or in the school. Okay. We have two final videos. But this is a quote that Sinead and I definitely live by. Play gives children a chance to practice what they are learning. And it's by Mr. Rogers. We, you've seen a lot of our class today because that's who we have access to. Um, but they have a second kindergarten in Van Skyver. And so I went down to the second kindergarten class and I wanted to learn what, hear what they learned also. So you'll get to hear from our class first and then you're going to hear from the other kindergarten class uh, about what they learned in kindergarten. To. What was she going to say, Ram? Oh, good bet. How to put things together.
recess? Yeah. Good job. You learned how to read? What'd you learn? They took ownership of what they learned. I think they think they learned a lot. <laughs> uh, we're really proud, and if it doesn't come across, we really love our jobs so much. And we just are so lucky to work with them today. And I really feel like this whole day kindergarten has shown us. Uh, I was so hesitant about it because I love my half day, my half day. But I am just amazed at the things that these kindergartners can do. So we're so excited to share them with us. So we're looking forward to uh, seeing your kindergartners in the fall. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, it's fun. Thank you. Walking in and see you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll turn it over to Dr. Bob. All right, just a few closing thoughts, then we'll open it up for questions. Um, despite what you've seen about all the creative things that our students are doing, when they come in to do the kindergarten, the one point that I would like to emphasize is we don't think we do anything to make your job in. It's our job to be ready for your job. It's not your child's job to be ready for Rest in that, okay? Um, next thing I want to talk about having two children in my home that are now 17 and 16. It's a different world now, okay? I don't have nearly enough video um, when they were five as, as they probably should have. Because they used to say the funniest things, right? They're so innocent, they're so funny. The things that they do. I would encourage you to record as much as you can and write as much as you can down for the things that you do, all the funny things that happen, all the enthusiasm that they have, things like that Mrs. Massey shared about sitting the principal down, but that is the example. And stuff doesn't happen when they get past about second grade, right? They start to understand a little bit more as the conscious gets a little bit more developed. So I would encourage you to take as much video as you can. Now, the second part of this. We are doing a lot of um, research into artificial intelligence because we're preparing for you know, this, this AI that is here now. Um, so earlier in the year, we met with some different types of, actually residents that have, have had much experience working with AI. First piece of advice I would have is don't post your, your kids' videos online. Okay, it's just, it's dangerous. I don't want to uh, elaborate any more than that. I don't want to scare you. If you have photos of your kids online, I think it's probably okay, but just as a general rule of thumb going forward in a world of AI, um, if you're posting photos of your kids online, people kind of could take those photos and do things that are, are, are that have been um, That's something I just would like to kind of offer something to think about. We try to strike the, the right balance with educating kids in a technological world without having them be relied on technology. So, right? Um, you know, there's a lot of positives to educational technology, but there's certainly a lot of a lot of concerns as well. So they should not we do not emphasize screens in kindergarten. We really try to you know the less time on a screen, uh, the better. As they go vertically throughout uh, our school, you know, they're going to be more reliant on a screen, not for just play time or busy time, but to support uh, a clearly defined educational outcome. Also, on school safety, um, we have an open house prior to the first day of school where parents are encouraged to come into the school. Uh, with their child and show your child the classroom okay, and where they're going to be. But on the first day of school, parents are not no longer permitted into the school. Okay? And the reason for this is because we don't know all the parents um, on the first day of school. And the other students who are now in first grade, second grade, third grade, when your children get there, you know, we're responsible. They, they are they know the adults that work in the school that are supposed to be there 
And when adults come into the school who are visitors, there's a signing process, take their driver's license, we get the name, we expect them to have business there, we know what their business is, and these visitors happen you know, very rarely. So we're putting all of the kids at risk if the doors are just wide open on the first day of school because it's, it's very difficult to monitor and it's not good practice. So you know, the number one job in, in our school district is not academic learning. Okay? And I say that as the superintendent of our school district. The number one job of the school district is to keep all students physically and psychologically safe. So detaching from that first day outside of the school may be difficult. Make sure you're prepared for that ahead of time. But we're going to be ready to support your child when you drop them off. Okay, does anybody have any questions for our teachers, myself, our administrators in the back, our registrar, or Mrs. Schumer? Anything at all? Is there any information you can provide on like before and after care and how that works? Sure. Um, we still are going to be plan on still having before care at all schools. Okay, this is something that you know we're going to try to stay committed to. It has not always been the case because you know, if we have only two students sign up at, at the school, you know, we may not be able to run a program at the same school. So a lot of the warfare is um, contingent on enrollment, enough enrollment. Uh, the aftercare program is at every single school. Uh, so we can run school six Yes. You can get information online, from the cost, and it's pretty Reasonable. Um, it was mentioned that Van Spiker has two kindergarten classes. Is that the same through for all schools? That there's two, or I think maybe there's one in some. So here's right? here's one of the problems that we have as a New Jersey educator, right? We have no idea how many kindergarten classes are going to be at Van Skyver or any other school because there's no census right now for the number of five-year-olds in Haddon Township. Um, there's a phenomenon in New Jersey education that despite how much time that we spend advertising kindergarten, kindergarten registration, kindergarten orientation, something happens the last week of August. <laughs> and the thing that happens the last week of August is a large influx of kindergarten students magically appear. Okay? And that number varies from year to year. Okay? We anticipate moving forward two sections of kindergarten at Strawbridge, two at Van Skyver, and one at Jennings, Stoy, and Edison. And when will we maybe get placement on that? Like, when will that communication go out? As late as, late as we will wait as long as possible okay. to provide the most accurate information without creating an urgent, frantic situation sure. for you. Okay. okay. Typically, when is that? Mid yeah. Thank you. And if you have a question, you want to email me or give me a call and say, how's it looking? <laughs> no, <laughs> I <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, what is your typical classroom size and teacher to student ratio? And Good question. Another thing I, I probably should have mentioned earlier. We not only made the investment into a full day instructional kindergarten program, we have this a consistent six hour educational assistant in the classroom with the teacher. So, teacher to student ratio is 25. Okay, but adult to student ratio is closer to about 12 for 80%. And if it's a um, inclusion class, then there would be an additional teacher um, in the class. Um, so general education teacher, special education teacher, but the nice part about that is when we walk in or anyone w would walk in who's supposed to be in the building, you don't know who's the general education teacher or who the special education teacher is. They are there for all of the students. So um, so for those classes, you do have two teachers in there. Okay, but it's usually just one assistant in the room or? One assistant, mm -hmm. one assistant, one teacher. Okay. And generally speaking, the kindergarten class 
the actual physical size of the classes is a pretty large classroom. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, what is the percentage of drop-off process? Uh, drop-off pro question is, what, what is the drop-off process? Well, we're supposed to be a, primarily a walking district, all right? That's not necessarily the case if you go stand outside our, our schools uh, in the morning. So we have buses that arrive at Jennings and buses that arrive at, at, at Van Skyver. So at those two schools, you have a combination of parent walk-up, uh, parent drop-off, parent drop-off is a designated area to drop off, and then a bus drop-off. So we try to coordinate uh, different sections where the buses pull up and where the parents drop off. For all neighborhood schools, we just kind of do the best we can. They're kind of embedded in a neighborhood. We don't have, if you drive around South Jersey, you'll see schools that have long entrance. It's like the middle school here, right? This is probably the only long entrance that we have on seven schools. Um, so principals do the best they can to organize uh, designated drop-offs. We have to get great support from the Manhattan Council Police, especially the beginning of the school year. Um, and that's been a smooth process the last few years. So I don't, I don't anticipate, you know, historically, we haven't had many issues the first weeks of school. We send out maps, right? It's yeah. not a uh, pain problem. Uh, there are some pain points. There are some pain points. You as the parent might not. There are some pain points at the beginning of the school year. Let me give you one as an example. We tier our bus runs, which means that the same bus driver that's going to drive home a high school student is going to drop those high school students off, and then they're going to return to help to most likely be in Skyver, pick up students, and then drive them home. Okay? When the high school students are late getting in the bus the first day, that bus may be late for party, that bus driver may not know exactly where the stops change from year to year. So at dismissal, there may be a delay uh, coming home uh, on the school buses. Uh, so don't expect your child to go on that bus exactly at the spistle and depart. There could be a uh, 10 or 15 minute wait, uh, especially towards the beginning of the school year. Yes, sir. Um, our child's going to be bus, and our older son went to Van Skyver, <clears throat> but I'm not sure if our youngest one is going to go to Van Skyver for kindergarten or if he's going to go to Jennings. Where's your older, how old is your older son? Uh, he's, he's in middle 13, school. He's 13, yeah. He's 13, he's yeah. in middle school. Yeah. Okay, and you, okay, so you would be what we call a dotted line. So depending on enrollment, you would probably assign to Jennings, are you the extension? No, no, no West, West College, 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 College Heights. Heights. We would ex probably would assign to Jennings or, or to Van Skyver. Um, but if we, if we assign to Van Skyver, it would be a school bus. So you won't know until August. So you'll okay. be in that group It'll be a bus where you'll know right? once we give that enrollment letter, but you're you definitely will be bust or and it will and be. And did you say there was a choice for that? No. Oh, you okay. have a preference. But okay. it really depends on enrollment. Number. Does that impact the pickup location or should we just no, so if you, because your transportation doesn't matter which school they're going to get dropped off at, it'll still be the same bus stop. Thank yeah. you. Sorry about that. No, it's okay. <laughs> yes, um, the special classes, art, music, language, how often are those? Are they like a weekly thing? Like they give them each uh -huh. week? We have one a day. Oh, cool. Um, and then I have a second question of like, uh, just because my kids have been in a uh, pre-K and a TK for a half day only. Mm -hmm. um, how in this year have you seen just like the stamina of the kids throughout the throughout well, the day and how are they de how do you deal with that how do they deal with that one slept for the first week yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 in the afternoon yeah. 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 Um, but go ahead you can yeah we definitely meet each student where they're at because some kids they don't you know they're ready to go full 
full throttle. Right. Um, so it definitely depends on your class and each student, but I think that's always a concern. I will say first grade will feel, they'll reap the benefits yeah, from be the full day, because it's usually the first grade teachers that are, are but we also are very aware of re reading the room and uh, you know accommodating, especially in the beginning of the year, until we build up that stamina. Yeah. I really think we try to put like our rigorous stuff in the morning as much as we can. That's going to be my, my next question. It's anyway. kind of spread out now because we've built that stamina, but right. in the beginning, yes, and then we're trying to have a little bit of a lighter afternoon. I got you. We have a little girl that asks for a snack still in the afternoon. <laughs> we'll have a couple cheeses. We try to beat them where they are. Okay. okay. Actually, a good book on that called When Good for Adults, too. It's written by Daniel Pink. Uh, as education for the patients, uh, but also for adults. It's a, it's a very good read. He's a researcher, and um, it's the whole like, premise of the book is like when you do stuff, when you do that will be most productive. So he has a big emphasis on you know, math should be as, as much as possible, math should be in the whole thing, right? Um, you know, if you need to go to the doctor, you know, with the next ray, don't do it at 2 p.m. because the doctor's going to miss something. <laughs> try to get the first appointment in the morning. So, uh, you know, we try to pay attention to helping challenge students when they're under math. So the subjects move throughout the day, like math, reading, they, you could do them different times. Yeah, we try to stick with the schedule as much as we can because we have kids that thrive off of that schedule, sure. of course. But we do have the flexibility to move as we need to for our schedule. And sometimes the specials are in the morning, sometimes they're in the afternoon, so some days they have to flip flop. But we do what works. And we switch it as we need to. I think it's at least one special every day, right? Yes, correct. Is there a day where they have two? Our is an hour. Right. Well, no. Right. One day. One day we have a double. One day is a double. That's true. So they at least have one special, and then one day they do them too. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Two questions. Um, Just kids, one question. Are kids and partners mostly in one classroom throughout the day, or do they visit like library? Yeah. Go to other That's classes? the special. So we go to gym, we go to music, we go to the art class, we go to the library. Okay. One. We go to Spanish. We go to the cafeteria. So there's a reason travel. Oh yes. Okay. Got okay. okay. it. Um, and have you all found that kindergartners prefer to buy lunch or bring lunch from home? Or that is the first personal, preference. personal preference. Okay. Yeah. If you have a picky eater, I would say keep them comfortable at the beginning and then maybe they'll branch out a little bit later when they're comfortable, but it really is a personal We made it a rule in our class for the first like three or four weeks that everybody had a brain so we knew how to get to the lunchroom, how to open up lunch, <laughs> how to sit down and have lunch. Um, and then once they kind of got comfortable, we allowed them to get to buy it. We asked parents to give us permission to say, yes, my child is allowed, because we had kids being like, yeah, I have money. <laughs> so I think it's just going to be your own child to right. uh, I want to encourage you to go to the website. We have a, well, yeah. not, not brand new anymore, but a new this year, a new food service provider. The name of the food service provider is Rixens, Rixens, and it's a stronger emphasis on fresh local food, so it's more fun to think about options. Um, I think we've improved the quality of food this year. We're, we're pretty satisfied with the, the school lunch program. Um, it is not taken off, though. Um, the thing I think is that we're also satisfied with is they want to hear from parents and children in terms of what did you like, what did you not like. So if the year gets started, your child's buying lunch, and those things that they really like are just like, I mean, the, the, the cafeteria manager named Sophie, she loves to hear from parents, and they're working really hard to try to accommodate this. Hot dog days ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big day today. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Um, quick question about sleep for kindergartners. Is that going to stay in place for next year? I know that last year, I have a kindergartner right now in Stratford, and they didn't start the year having staff. Okay. So I was just hoping that we were going to carry that. Yes, yeah, so that was Mrs. Lunsford's decision. She took that away. Okay. Mrs. Strawberries. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 I'm like, <"Jeez." laughs> I'm like, <"Jeez." laughs> I'm like <"Jeez." laughs> I think there might, there might have been some variability there. there might have been a teacher. I was going to say, I know Abby and Sky really do have snack, and they do in the other classroom too. It might be a teacher preference. We sure. have it now, and it, it's, it was pretty much like after the first month, it went in place. But yeah. it, like that first month was a little dicey. So, yeah. like, you know. <laughs> Just hoping that that stays in place. I mean, that can be something we talk about with the principals, kind of just like set it as across the board, but right. that's a straight line. We, yeah, we can note that. Okay. 
You guys do intermittent fasting in kindergarten? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I was going to say, as the kindergarten teachers, we'd say yes. Yes. <laughs> we all need that 10 minutes. Nobody needs to be angry. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Um, first, thank you for doing the presentation and staying after. I was like, I'm sure, a very long day. Um, it was wonderful. Um, I was curious about the uh, communication with parents, either like individual about your child, but also like as a classroom, this mm -hmm. is what we're doing. So I call Amy our PR person because she always has a video up. Uh, we utilize Seesaw. Every teacher has their kind of platform. Um, you will get communication. How they do it will be up to the teacher, the classroom teacher. Uh, we do have conferences like the rest of the district around November, um, but I think the teachers are always open. If you have a need, I would say, you know, never be afraid to reach out to a teacher. They'll, they'll always be happy to meet if you need to do that. <coughs> and so there are emails. Uh, we just had this conversation, actually. Ms. Lunsford and I were having this conversation just in general. So from the classroom, emails, newsletters, et cetera, but the principals also have a variety of more newsletters that go out, remind, I know a lot of teachers use Dojo, mm -hmm. so you will have more than enough information and I highly recommend like putting the dates on your Google Calendar and if you like a hard planner copy like I do, um, putting it there too. There are a lot of events and activities. Look at the marquee out in front of the schools, like there's a, a lot of places they get the information so you'll always be up to date and if you need something just you can act at the beginning of the day, end of the day and we're really um, responsive to get back to you. And I know you were worried more about the teachers, but each school does also have a PTA Facebook page, and I would highly recommend getting on that because those PTA rounds are also awesome about keeping up with things. Mm -hmm. On that topic, one of the things that we'll probably be looking at moving forward is our report card. So not a conversation for tonight, but the way we report student progress to parents probably really evolve over the next few years, and probably truly evolve. But to add caps would be like the innovate and at the same time hold on everything that all the traditions at the same time. I think we're giving parents more feedback than ever. Communication is easier than ever. So I don't know where our report cards will, you know, they might change a little bit, you know, from, from if you have other kids in the district that go through our schools. I don't necessarily know we can be writing long narratives a couple times a year to parents. It's just parents have more access to our future for feedback than ever. So just something to think about moving forward. Here's a question. Yes, sir. Is there a peanut policy for you to sell it by class or school? I don't think I, mean, I, mean, I don't believe there's a policy district wide, but if there's a peanut allergy handle that for our school nurse, um, we will have school nurses assigned to every building um, and uh, at least that's the anticipation. And um, we're pretty on top of that in terms of understanding where the allergy is and making sure that there's no risk that you have any. In the summer, um, if you submitted a physical to me and it said peanut allergy on there, the nurse will contact you before school. And and it's it's Part of our lunch program has peanut butter jelly as an option. Yeah, you do. We've definitely handled that pretty well to be able to accommodate kids who want to eat peanut butter sandwiches yeah, yeah. those who may be lunch. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. <laughs> I have a question about the kinder bond program since you mentioned it. Is that at every school or is it just at the school that you're at? <laughs> I started yeah, doing kinder bunks for many years ago. Um, and I did it all five schools, so at some point or another they've had them. Um, but some schools do and some schools don't. Um, I would like, we have an amazing team of teachers and I think that we could definitely get it up in all the schools that launched just for that consistency um, because it really does provide camaraderie in the school and like you know our kids see their third grade buddies and they're hugging them and um, Allison was when I was at Strawbridge we were kinder bud partners and it really is a great thing to create community in the school so hopefully next year we can get everyone yes, sir. Give me the state budget cuts what areas do you anticipate being most to get back? Okay so right now where we are if I could draw this all up and pull this up this is for the board meeting tomorrow night, so I can kind of rehash where we were at the finish of the last, the end of the last meeting. Um, we added 
positions two years ago that were part of the ESSER funding. So basically the federal government gave us a lot of funding three or four years ago coming out of COVID. And it came with a warning. I mean, so here, here's money. It's to help students accelerate learning and recover from COVID. It will not be permanent in your budget. Don't commit to positions. Don't overspend it on personnel. So, but it's people that help your kids recover from COVID. It's people that help your kids get you know, up accelerate. So we split. We, we took about half of it, put it in our facilities, and we took the other half of it. We, we hired staff. Okay? The staff that we hired as part of those extra monies does not look like, most of them does not look like that they will be able to continue now four years later. Um, so the cuts that I am right now anticipating is going from full-time gifted talent teacher to some other way to deliver gifted talent services for students who have been identified as gifted talent. We added a supplementary reading teacher uh, elementary level that I don't believe that we'll be able to continue with that position. That may need to be, that may be able to go back to like a teaching assistant. Um, we had a full time. We have had, this year we had three full time guidance counselors to elementary level. The third one most likely will be now be split between elementary and middle school. One elementary and one middle school. So we have to hedge there and share resources. Um, and I think uh, our kids had library media services delivered by a media specialist at the elementary level in the last few years. And um, that position, I don't think, is going to be in the budget for next year. But we certainly anticipate that we're going to bring that one back. Um, we'll put a $3 million library in here in a few years. Certainly, we're going to need a media specialist to do why. So that one is going to fall. But those are the four, I think, at the elementary level. Like this one, Chantel? No, I don't think so. <coughs> okay. So the, the gifted classes will exist, those will pare down or a different form. Gifted well, services, gifted yeah. Service. By, by state law, we provide gifted services. We have to identify students who can be identified by people who are gifted. Um, we don't have to look for services. And we just don't know how those services are going to be moving right now. And did that start in kindergarten? Right? When we start to identify in kindergarten, but there's no, I don't want to do it. Yeah. yeah, so that's a push in. And um, so, how that looks next year, we're going to have to be creative and innovative with how the services are um, offered, but the services will be offered. And um, there's, so it's a push in in kindergarten. There's um, mass testing in second grade to cast the widest net. And those services go through elementary school and middle school on an individualized um, basis based on what the students' interests are and um, the parents and their input, and that's how the services are offered right now. But it's elementary and middle school, and then once they get high school, they get to take their AP courses and things like that. So that's all it's offered. Thank you. Thank you. On, our, on our district website, if you don't have any kids in the district, go to the website. There's a button at the top that says "Sign Up for District News." You just put your name and your email in that. You'll start receiving our district updates immediately. And I think I'm sending out an update this Friday on kind of where the budget. Is. One more shoe has to drop from Trenton. We received extraordinary aid uh, in July. It's a figure that we still don't have. It's reimbursement for special education costs. I'm going to also estimate in recent years about person who is in the deficit. Listen, just like you know, when we go to the supermarket now, everything for the register, like, what? That's that's the total. Like everything just seems like it's higher. All the services that, that we're providing out for out of district, the cost of fuel for our buses, the cost of repairs, the cost of materials, everything is, is, is just escalating at such a rapid rate. Um, it's not just the state aid that has affected us. Um, we're having deficits right now that we're trying to overcome. Um, yes, sir. On the elementary level, when there is a whether they is closure, is it a closure or is there a virtual learning day? Virtual learning days um, are not permitted by the law because of snow. So when it snows and we cannot safely get
get the students to school I don't understand what it is. So, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> um, could you share a little bit about like in terms of emergency communications? Like how is that handled? Do you have an emergency communication system? Like yeah. what would be the process? Yeah, so we do have an emergency communication system um, and it's updated, I believe it's updated daily. The system will allow for text, email, phone call for different numbers, three or four different numbers, and um, Twitter. Those are the four. When we send it out, we get a report of which numbers are no, no longer good. And that, and that report is generally pretty lengthy. When it gets an number of service, it just automatically goes uh, to the next number. So I think it's important to make sure that the information is updated. Okay, but it's like a system that's in place in terms of if there is something. Yes. Yes. Great. Um, and sorry, just the second question I have is just around inclusion classrooms. I know that was mentioned at the beginning. I'm just kind of curious of is that if your student does have an IEP, is it dependent on like how does that process work? In terms so of yeah. So we have about 20% of our population. Uh, Students that are going to be involved in the IEP, individualized education, uh, and that's the role of special education. Oftentimes, that's the result of uh, could be a condition, and that is going to require a placement in what we like to describe as the least restrictive environment. Okay, and if it's more of a significant situation where the child may need to be what we call self-contained class, okay, where all the students in that class are, uh, have similarities. It may be a different type of environment where the child would be in an inclusion class. Okay? If the child is in an inclusion class, it could be something as uh, insignificant as a speech delay, right? Uh, or some other type of mild uh, form of as part of IEP. If that's the case, there needs to be a second teacher in the room that is legally responsible for that child's educational program. So if it's an inclusion classroom, whether it's kindergarten or first grade, you have the classroom teacher, you have the special education teacher, probably you still have the aid in kindergarten, so there'll be three adults. All three adults are responsible for all the students. Okay, it's a team. And there should not be a situation where the general education teacher is teaching the students that don't have the IEP and the special education teacher is teaching the students that have the IEP. They're both responsible for all. The aid is not only assisting the students, the aid is assisting both teachers and serves at the discretion um, of the teacher. Great, thank you. And sorry, can I just ask the follow-up question? Go ahead. Just in terms of like, I think you mentioned guidance counselors. Like, is there a school psychologist? Like, are there other folks that yeah, are the full in terms functioning, of, okay. fully functioning child study team district wide? We don't have a child study team at each school, but uh, Dana Connor is the director of special services, and she manages the child study team. And all the team is a district social worker, speech therapist, school psychologist. LBTC, uh, and actually the school counselors are considered part of that team as well. Do you have any questions related to, to that program? You know, being a con or should we be responsive and do that? Yes, sir. You have any inclusion class? Yes. And then you count for kids? Yeah, Captain. Yeah. Now you're yeah, yeah, yeah. There are limits. There's appropriate numbers that can be required uh, of every classroom. Uh, so it's eight, eight, yeah. And it's to balance. So our classes are balanced so that we have a very inclusive class. So you're going to have a balanced number of general education students and a balanced number of students who may require some special education. Um, 
my own children are very old. I don't know how because I'm not old, but they are very old. But my um, my own children have been in general education classes, but they've been very fortunate to have been placed in inclusion classes along the way. And those have been some of the best experiences because you know we always want to go in and have that diversity of thought and different experiences and embrace all uniqueness. Um, but those have been amazing because not only do you get the additional teacher, and you, like I said, you walk in, you don't know who's supposed to teach who because everyone's teaching all of the students, but it's just been amazing experiences for, so those actually you know, used to be my like, preference. Whereas, you know, some people think, oh, I don't want my child in an inclusion class because, you know, what is that experience going to be like? It's going to be, a, it's, you know, going to look like the real world and it's a really amazing process to watch. So, um, but it's balanced as far as numbers go. Is the included class only add? Yes, have it? No. Oh, no. Ignore. Yeah, there's no plan for next year. This year, yeah. This year is the answer. This year is the answer. But we have no plan. We'll all know in August. It's a one year plan. Every, every year is a one year plan. We try to make decisions that, um, you know, enrollment shifts change from year to year, kids change, teachers change, change buildings, kids change, funding changes. Um, so our goal is they take buying a ticket, right? You know, you're essentially you're buying a ticket. If I choose to live in Hat Township, it is getting more expensive considering the property taxes. We get it. Our goal is to provide them with the best educational experiences that we can to take it very seriously and we do it one year at a time. So our goal, you know, right now is for your child to have the best year you can possibly provide them next year. At the end of next year we'll start planning for the following year. It's definitely one year at a time. Yes, sir. Silly question, but homework do we have homework in the kindergarten <coughs> grade or what's the uh, sure uh, I think that really comes from the classroom teacher they make ultimately the decisions um, I can see for us we move from a half day to a full day so what we value is that you go home have dinner with your family I think the most we send home is reading especially like when we get into guided reading um, and that really is just an opportunity to more so for your child to connect with you um, but I think the best thing you can do for any child is to read to them so um, the answer for us I can speak for is, is no but majority of us do not they've already had a long day <laughs> Thing you said about dinner is a lot of so actually a lot of research as parents and I, and I wish you know, you know now looking through the rearview mirror my kids are teenagers but they say that the three things that you can say to your kids every day um, to support them the most is you know I love you I forgive you because they're gonna make mistakes every day and it's time for dinner right you know the, the, the research coming out with increased amounts of screen time parallels the same research that shows the lack of family time. Uh, the less families that are gathering around the dinner table now, 2024 than ever, right? All over extend that we're running in a different, really different directions. As your children get older, it will get more difficult. Uh, so we will call kind of your family time around the dinner table or whatever, however, whatever type of communal experience you can create, the better. In our, in our vision on the wall behind this gray, it, it says uh, you know, our goal is that all students will have a sense of belonging and a sense of significance. Uh, but the school is just an extension of your home. So, you know, that sense of belonging and sense of significance, you know, should start in your home. Okay. The first day. Mm -hmm. First day after Labor Day. Right? September fourth. I know. Uh, let's get to summer first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will die in there. I think it's. Hold on. I think it's Teacher Day. <laughs>
I think it's two days after the school calendar is on the website. All three years of the school calendar, this year and the next two years are on. Um, are available. I think they're posted or should be live. This year for the first time before school started, the kindergartens across the district had an open house. Yes. And I would say that is a really important day for your kids and for you, for them to make connection to us on that first day so they can release you right. and to know the environment and to know like this is a safe person, mom, dad, my grown up, grandparent has met them. So make an effort to go to that because that's really important. Yeah, and I will send out the information about that and um, the times and what time slot it's, is available. It's a fun day. It's usually the day before like right. the two days before yeah. starts. Of course. Yes. Yeah. You'll know who your teacher is. Okay? Yeah. And what your class list is. And it gives you the opportunity to drop off any supplies so they're not trying to light in with you know, their, their recyclable bags. And yes. all these things, like they just walk in that day, and they're going to be fine. Somebody will meet them, and they will be escorted to the class. And parents, if it's your first time, you will, you know, maybe have a moment of like, oh my gosh, um, it's a sad but joyous day, and just enjoy it. it goes by really fast. I will say one thing that I've learned. This is only my second year in the district. Um, the neighborhood schools and the spirit and the pride that comes with those neighborhood schools is very deep in Haddon Township. So when I see the high schoolers running out to field day and they're like competing, like stories better than Jenny, and it is like they celebrate their elementary schools. Something like I've never seen. Like you think it'd be like middle school, high school, like their elementary school year stay with them. So enjoy it, it goes by fast and just cherish all the time that you have. Thank you so much for coming. All right, we'll stay. Yeah. Any questions afterwards, we'll hang around.